Hello, Brick fans, and welcome to Brick Studio. I am Joe, and I've brought reinforcement with me. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm new here, and we're going to tell you something about the sets. Yes, who would have thought? And um, he has got he has this idea that we make a voyage through different countries, and we're going to start with Italy. Exactly. We're going on a grand Italy tour. First of all, we'd obviously like to start with the house that we live in in Italy, which is this wonderfully designed uh, mansion. You built it, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. I actually built this very sample. It is uh, enormous. It's more than six and a half thousand pieces. Unsorted pieces, which you all got on your table at the same time. So get ready for a wild experience if you change it. But that makes it incredibly cheap at 200 euros. You can lift up the roof. I must say, I think the roof is very well designed. I mean, I like all the little details that are in it, yes. like the different colors. I mean, it makes it for a very, I don't know, authentic experience, I'd say. It does, but it also makes for a small, it makes for a little, um, let's say, it is not the most fun part of the um, entire build. Fair enough. But uh, I suppose what makes up for it are the wonderful little details. <laughs> and the bigger details. So let's yeah. start with the master bedroom I yes think. right let's go through the master bedroom so you design it what i'm gonna say i is, didn't design well you didn't design it. it you built it so i can i can say what i really like yeah uh right let's not break it right here in the camera i hope you can see it um this has some wonderful elements all right so we'll go to the top view for this one well, let's see if it's underneath <laughs> perfect fantastic <laughs> right okay so in here we obviously have a bed yeah. Uh, very nice, everything, the picture's nice in there as well. What I'm absolutely fascinated by are these little curtains. I mean, I find it really cool that you've got these curtains added in that move as well. Mm -hmm. You can look through the window here and see them. I mean, it's fantastic. I thought it was a really creative design element. It is. But um, what uh, he doesn't mention is that this is one of the few houses actually that do have lights inside them. And that is rather rare in by itself that most people, when they build things, just assume that there's just lights in the, in the ceiling. And since you've got to put the um, room somewhere, they are not shown. But in this case, they are shown here. A little And he breaks it. Yes. Uh, well, we'll get to me not breaking stuff soon. But <laughs> uh, well, as you can see, it's very easy to fix again. Yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, you've got the curtains, you've got a running machine. Uh, the wardrobe, I thought the wardrobe was cool with all the little clothes in it as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not often that you see bricks that kind of are supposed to look like clothes. I mean, we have yeah. it over here as well again. So I thought that was very creative at least. Um, I, I mean, also the running machine, fantastic master bedroom. Although I don't know who'd have a running machine in their bedroom. Where else would you put it? In the living room? Living room, cellar. I know, I mean, this nah, doesn't, doesn't have a cellar. Exactly. But, so. And the living room is already full of stuff you're going to see later. That's true. What actually I found interesting is the thing that you have the AC. It's oh, built yes. yeah, yeah. in here, as you can probably see here. And on the same spot, on the appropriate spot outside, you got the air cooling. So it really works. Yeah. It's on the other side as well, isn't it? On the lower floor. Yes, it is, in the living room. Well, and that's a good thing. I mean, I mean, us in Germany, we don't have AC in our houses, but nah. the Italians, where it's really warm, certainly need that. And, and on the off. other side, nah, oh, don't want to break it. Because these walls, since you did, since the rooms on either side are detachable, it's just basically one line of bricks. It is stable, but you shouldn't knock it off. And on the other side, you have two rooms, actually. The bathroom with a nice corner of a bathtub and the playroom for the kid. Also with a wardrobe in bright and cheery yellow and with a airplane model suspended from the ceiling. <coughs> yeah, what I must say about that is I find the child's room is probably, if not the coolest room because of the little details they thought of. I mean, if you check it out, the child's room isn't a nice and clean space or anything. It's like a child would have it. It's messy, it's full of toys, and it's all around the floor, and but not. they're stuck to the floor with the bricks. So it's very yep. creative, I must say. It is. And you can also open the doors here to like look into the room. So there we go. So I find it very cool. And of course we have the curtains again here. Yeah. So, and then also in the bathroom, that shower that you mentioned, I mean, the curved oh, yeah. walls going up, I mean, that's creative. That's really creative. Right. 
Then we've got the lower floor. What and I'd like to mention first is this. I shall pop that off yeah. and show it to the camera. You've got a wonderful massive chandelier here that also turns as well. I'm not find... sure whether that's intentional or just um, due to the construction method used. Okay, but it looks nice if it can It turn. does. So I find that a very nice addition. <laughs> right, we can't take these out, can we? Nope. So uh, we'll have to use the top camera for that. Yeah, let's just do right. this right here. Let's go uh, probably yes. to the kitchen. Yeah. All right. So what I thought was fantastic here is the pasta. <laughs> it's an Italian. The Italians are cooking pasta. I mean, come on. It's, <laughs> it's creative. So <laughs> It's so much of a cliche that it's cool. <laughs> yeah. So I did enjoy that. Of course, here again, as you mentioned, the lights. You can mm -hmm. move these as well. So for the top camera to look into the kitchen. I mean, you've got plates stacked here. Um, the curtains as well in a different design method than the curtains in the other rooms, mm -hmm. which I also liked. And yeah, so very, very creative, especially here. You've got the clock and everything, like a real kitchen would be. I yeah. mean, it's really very much like what you'd know from home. Or I mean, let's say if you've got a villa in the middle of Italy. And who doesn't? Exactly. Yeah. You've also got the radio in the kitchen and uh, just turn it around for the detail camera. On this side, you've got a full, what is it, kitchen cabinets? Yeah, kitchen cabinets. Oh. Ha! I finally got somebody who I can ask how the stuff is called in, in English. I'm not going to correct you all the time, though. If you need correcting, your English is pretty good. So. Ah, thank you. And you've got a fridge in here, which is also filled. You've got kitchen machines, a coffee maker. And on the other side of the room, you have, of course, the stacked dishes. And an honest-to-god kitchen machine, which is built with a, what do you call these swirly little whisk. things? A whisk. Yes. Oh. What I also like about this is the door. Yeah. But, I mean, you can actually slide the door in and out with ease. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's practical, it's perfect. I it think is. it's really well done. It is. It's, I gotta say, it's, uh, honestly, it's a masterpiece. And on the other side, you've got the living room. And um, as you can see from the top-down view, there's not much space to put the treadmill. So exactly, because you've got a piano in here. A uh, oh, grand piano. Yes, and this piano is very grand, as you can see here. I mean, I, look how perfectly done it is. I mean, yes, of course, it's not the keys that you'll have on a piano, but that would be way too small. You need diamond blocks to do that. Awesome. So this is really, really, I mean, it looks absolutely stunning for such a small piece. Mm -hmm. And the way that it fits in here. I, I hope I can get it in, because I don't think it's actually supposed to take this out. Yeah, I So, yes. And nice. Ross just kindly demonstrated it for you. I kindly demonstrated why you shouldn't take it out. <laughs> so let's just pretend that I've put it in correctly. Yes, of course. Um, of course it goes the other way. But, um, I mean, you've got the couch here. Yeah, you've got the flat screen TV. Mm -hmm. You even got some, I think it's artwork in those, um, Glass cabinets. Mm. Mm. And then, of Which course, here you've got the other AC, like in the top floor. Uh -huh. And again, different blinds. And these blinds also like the ones that you pull down on string. Yeah. I mean, it's really creative. It is. And of course, you've got, well, I actually don't know whether which one is the front or the rear. Let's just pretend that this one here is the front entrance. Okay. Where you have the, uh, what's it called? Entrance area? It's, yeah, the hallway. The hallway, that was. Should have followed that. And um, where you've got the hallway, and underneath the stairs, you're building a brick built shoe rack, which I cannot show you because, well, I can't take it out. And. So some of these things you only know when they're there once you've built it. Oh, yes. Okay. And on the other side, you have got the fantastic garden, where I think, is, which is, I think, is the rear garden. You've got. No, no, I, think, I actually think it's the entrance. You think it's you the know entrance? Why? Why? Because of this fantastic little post box. Might be. I mean, if it's a post box, the postman has to come by, throw it in here. And he wouldn't do that from the back entrance. Although the question is, why would you have a jacuzzi in your front garden? So you could look down on the peasants having to walk by. Oh, that's right. That might be an idea, but <laughs> I actually don't know either. Well, you've got a jacuzzi, brick built with those interesting little ice cream pieces as bubbles. Hmm. On trans medium blue, trans dark blue. I actually never sure whether it's medium or dark. I think it's dark. I didn't know there were different types, but I suppose <laughs> that's what I'm here to learn. That's uh, what we're going to tell you. You've got a barbecue and you've got a nice um, barbecue area outside. I mean, if it's Italy, it should be a pizza oven, let's be honest. 
you're really, really grabbing stuff from the cliche box, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I, I do like stereotypes. <laughs> but come on, we're doing a world tour. We've got to go for the stereotypes. That's true. Just wait to our America video. <laughs> oh, God. I am afraid, very afraid. I even wear an America t-shirt. Now I'm even more afraid. Oh, well. Anyway, so this is the garden. Um, this is the entire house. Of course, here, if you can see it from the top, you have some little wheelie bins here, which is yeah. also another little added creative thing. I mean, let's say you're staying here as a holiday home. I mean, that would be a great holiday home, but you still got to take out the bins, don't you? Yeah. So, I mean... But you can definitely see the German influence because those bins are color-coded by what you put in. You've got a green one for glass, I suppose. You've got a blue one for paper. And, of course, you've got a gray one for the rest. Fantastic. I yeah. mean, us Germans, we do like our Mülltrennung, don't we? Oh, definitely. Yes. There's no British word for Mülltrennung. Uh, considering they don't particularly do it that much. I mean, it's called recycling. That's that's the standard name yeah. of it. So, oops. I hope I can get this one in. It is actually interesting. And I gotta say, I always find it weird if you throw everything together in the same rubbish bin. Yes, yes. It's just so wasteful. Isn't it the other way around? Mm, yeah. All right. You do that one, I'll do this one. Exactly. And as you can see, it slots nicely in. And it slots in with absolute ease. Yeah. And, the and the roof as well. Just rests on top. It's actually more it? stable than it does look. I mean, it's one of the most stable sets. I mean, I'm not scared of picking this one up <laughs> at all. So. But it is huge and massive and rather heavy. It does weigh a lot, yes. So. Huh. But I mean, it's a certain great addition. I mean, if you have visitors over, you can spend hours looking at this thing. So it's a great addition to any home. But that how is. long did it take you to build? Do you know that? I think I, it took me 30 hours. Wow, okay. Well, it's six and a half thousand pieces and exactly. you got all of them at the same time on the table. It's 127 different bags of parts, some of which are uh, single type and some of which aren't. Well, for some people it's fun, but... It we're certainly makes to... it more challenging. It definitely does. Which adds the hours and I mean, come on, more hours of building is more fun, so. Yes, especially since there are no unnecessary small parts in here. Everything, every part you see here is necessary. And uh, you want to drive, don't you? Yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to drive. drive. We're going to drive to the next part of Italy. Yeah. All right. So. Get the car. What are we going to drive with? Harry hold den Wagen. A reference from... There was this crime show where there was always this inspector who says to his uh, subordinates, allegedly, um, that he should always get the car, Inspector Derek. Okay, I've never heard of it. Ah, I mean, God. age gap plus old series. I mean, my dad <laughs> quotes him the whole time, so. Hmm. Okay, um, right, we'll be right back. And we're back. We're back with an Italian sports car because how else are you gonna get around Italy in style? <laughs> and in a small car. This one is a set from Mulking and it's actually a licensed uh, mock design by the, correct me if I'm wrong, talented Firas Abujaka, who is a very talented car designer. And it's basically, it comes from an alternate build from a Lego set, mm. the Porsche, I think, which explains some of the rather um, colorful choices he made. He was trying to use the part from the original set to create this car, and he succeeded admirably. I must say, I must say, because this part, car has loads of movable pieces. I'm, I'm serious, loads. I mean, so we've got the bonnet, we've got the spoiler, but we've also got the engine bay, we've Ooh. got a door, another door, and of course you want to do, you can do the windscreen. <laughs> but that's not uh, advisable. Anyway, um, my favorite part of the, about the car, odd choice, the seats. The seats. Why are the seats not choice? Because they're red? No, it's an odd choice for favorite part of the car. Ah, ah. Because, I mean, what? look at them. Look how absolutely fantastic. Oh, I'll close up mm -hmm. this again. But look how fantastic they are. I mean, they look like the easy riffled seats that you actually have in cars. Mm -hmm. And I find it a really creative design choice to make them like that. I mean, I've, I've never seen something in a car like that before. Oh, well, a brick car. I've seen it in real cars, <laughs> which is exactly why I find it so fantastic. Because I, I, I was absolutely standard by how real life it looks. I mean, of course, oh, yeah. you've got the gear stick, which sadly, that make of the car doesn't do anymore. They're all automatic these days. Yeah. Um, but gear sticks do actually improve the driving experience. For our American friends, try it out. 
<laughs> um, you've got a spoiler, the engine bay, so I find it a fantastic, fantastic set. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add? Mm, nothing particular. I, mean, I actually didn't see it beforehand, but uh, I really can appreciate the design, especially since it comes from a very, very limited selection of parts originally. Hmm. I mean, it's creative, it's cool, I and mean, we can spin it once more. I mean, it also dries really smoothly, so I like that as well. No. I mean, if you want to use it as a toy, if you want to use it as a model, you can use it as both. So I find it very cool. But let's face it, it's a car. There's not much else to say about it, apart from that it's really well designed, <laughs> looks cool, and I think it would make a great addition for, well, any room, kids' room, adults' room, living room, if your wife, girlfriend, or partner likes it. So we'll see, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's cool. I like it. Yeah. And where do we drive on it? Uh, that's a big question. Which Italy, Italian city is your favorite? Rome. Rome. Hands down, Rome. Okay, hands down, Rome. I've never been. You've never been to Rome? I've never been to Rome. Well, go there in the winter because mm -hmm. that, there's not much tourists there and the weather is much more agreeable. Okay. And don't go in your own car. Okay, yes. Seriously. Italian drivers. Italian yes. drivers in Italian. Nothing against Italian drivers, um, but my uncle is Italian. And he's, he's a good driver, um, but he said that uh, the other people in this country may not be that great. Um, all right, but we take the car. I mean, I'd like to take this car in real life yeah. and go to my absolute favorite city probably in the world. So uh, why my- Why Venice? Why Venice? As my favorite city or why did I build it? Both. Okay, my favorite city, it is hands down a place like no other. I mean, you walk through there, canals to the left and right. I mean, I have a real pendant for falling into water. <laughs> I luckily have never fallen into the Venice canals, even if I've been there twice. But I find it an astounding city. I mean, you go there and it's really unlike anything you've ever seen before. Okay. Absolutely. And I've been to the film festival here. Fantastic experience. Can recommend that to anyone. And I mean, just walking across this actual place, walking across, oops, let's hope I don't forget. Yes, San Marco? Yes. Walking across there at 7 a.m. in the morning when there are five people on here <laughs> is an absolute experience because the moment you turn up here at, let's say, 10 or 12 a.m., the entire thing is full. So walk around there at 7 a.m. or even earlier or late at night, it's an absolute fantastic experience. That's actually the thing that prevents me from going to Venice more than anything else, that it is a the very touristy tourist city and I like my privacy and I do not like a lot of people. And that's one thing I've got to say about Venice well. You take two steps into a different unknown alley and it's quiet. If you go off the beaten path in Venice, you get absolute quiet, no tourists. Oh. I once walked around the edges of Venice, I saw about five people, and it was in the middle of the day in September. That sounds nicer than that. I mean, thought. it's great if you go there. Um, so I thought, I thought it's a great city, been there twice, and that's why I wanted to build it. And this is, like with the villa, the actual set that I built. <laughs> and my God, it was a lot of work. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a lot of fun as well. He came to me and said, hmm, do we have the, uh, do we have the set of the sub marketplace? And I said, yes, we do. Why do you want to build it? He said, yes. And I said, have fun, because it's his first architecture set. And he was rather taken aback by the entire uh, amount of um, one by one plates. And there are a lot of them. <laughs> wow. And I mean, it took a long while. I, was, I did this for about 10 to 12 hours. Okay. It's nearly three and a half thousand pieces. Um, but I liked the way that it started looking like Venice after a while. It took me about three, four hours, but then I realized, hey, wait, I built this little garden here. And I remember the garden from when I visited. And then slowly you built each building. Like, oh, I remember this. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun when I did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got here, you can take it off for a bit. You've got the bell tower of which the name I sadly do not know. Um, I should have looked that out before Andy. Um, but it's fantastic. I mean, it's a really nice set. Mm -hmm. It's small enough to fit on one shelf, so you can go and say to your friends and visitors, hey, check it out, and they can uh, marvel at the little intricate details, and you can tell them about the building process, which did take a long while. But I thought <laughs> it was great. I mean, you've got the Duomo here, the Doge's Palace, as it's called. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's every little thing actually reminds you of Venice, especially the floor. Espe the floor was an absolute fantastic design thing. I've never seen it in sets like that before. It's curved, so you have to slot it in properly. And that's just, 
there, there were so many elements where I thought it might be stressful to build, but the absolute sheer pleasure you get when it all fits together, that yeah. was great. That was really something that I've not felt for a long time. Like I was like, wow, this fits together perfectly. And I thought of the ingenious creativity of the design. So I was really, really impressed with that. Architecture sets in by the sub themselves are rather rewarding if you like it and if you can, um, let's be honest, stomach building the entire little things. But it's the, it's the usage and the non-standard usage of parts. For instance, this one here is a Technic brick with an axle mm -hmm. hole in there, which you use for the, um, well, for the details and the paving of the place or the plaza. Yeah, I mean, that's great. I mean, all the little ideas that people have to come up with to think of this and oh, our yeah. designers. I mean, I couldn't do it, but <laughs> that's why I'm that. not doing that. Um, that's why I'm just telling you about them. Um, but I find it creative. I was really, really impressed with it, and I had a lot of fun building this, and I showed it to my family because I built it, uh, sadly, on the kitchen table, and they were <laughs> not impressed with that. <laughs> but when I have my own place soon, uh, I can... Uh, annoy my girlfriend and build it on our kitchen table. Ah, anyway, she liked that. She will. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I did use up, let's say, our kitchen table this size. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was half full because, again, the parts all come in separate bags and then you've got to mix them all up and then I didn't sort them beforehand. I didn't sort them. I just <laughs> put them out on the table and thought, right, where can I go next? So, ah. yeah. But it was great fun building it and, yeah. I'm I suppose that concludes uh, tour. Italy tour. Yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as well. That's three different sets from Italy. I'm sure we have quite a few more from Italy. Yes, definitely. Um, we have something from Rome as well. And we have the um, Peter's St. Peter's Cathedral. We've got the rendition of the Forum Romanum, as it was back in the day of the Romans. And we've also got Pisa, among other things. So just check it out in the shop. You'll find something. Exactly. Definitely. I mean, we have quite a few Italy sets. But anyway. Where do you think our uh, next stop will be? Which part of the world will we see? There's a hint. If you check out our Instagram or our YouTube shorts, you'll see some other place where we're going, and that might give you a hint. Anyway, uh, we hope you enjoyed that uh, quick stop off in Italy. If you like it and want to comment, just drop a comment down below and uh, like and subscribe, as usual. Exactly. And, I mean, you can never have enough bricks. But there will be more. And, exactly. Enjoy, have fun building, because I know I did. And yeah. I see you. We'll see. We'll see. We you will next see time. you next time. Exactly. Have Goodbye. fun. Goodbye.